All right, I'd like to give you a few helpful hints on your Are You Ready for Calculus packet. Of course, this is your take-home test. Uh, some of these I'll give you the answers for, some of them I won't. Uh, X plus 4 to the third, got to foil those first two and then distribute your last one, and you got a little bit of algebra to do, but nothing you can't handle. The last one on there, remember, power to a power, multiply the power. So X to the, what do you think that's going to be? All right. Next up, x cubed minus y cubed. You should look up that formula. Well, I'll give you the formula. a cubed minus b cubed falls into this formula, so you should be able to figure it out with x's and y's. With that in mind, this is also a difference of two cubes. Instead, just let x or a equal x plus h, and then you've got a cubed minus x cubed. Write it out like so, and then just resubstitute in, and you've got you could probably simplify a little bit. Next up, you've got x to the 6a minus t to the 3b. Rewrite it as the difference of two cubes. It'd be x to the 2a to the cubed minus t to the b to the third power. So there's your a cubed minus your b cubed. Use the formula and uh, go to town. Next, I'm asking you to rationalize the numerator. Usually, you rationalize the denominator. It doesn't matter. I just want you to get the square root out of the numerator. So you need to multiply by the conjugant. So if you foil the top, you'll see the radical disappears. The famous box problem on the function sheet near the end of the packet. If you have a 20 by 30 rectangular sheet of paper or cardboard, and you cut little corners out that are x wide, What's the volume of the, the box that gets created? So think about all the little corners that you take an x out of. So now the long part is 30 minus 2x, and the, the short part is 20 minus 2x, and the height of this thing is x. You can figure out what the volume is from there. Then we go to some domain problems. Remember, domain is what x can be. Really focus on what x can't be. I look at this problem, I got x's in the bottom, so x that bottom can't become 0. But I also have x squared minus 4 under a square root. That thing can't ever be negative, so set it greater than or equal to 0. And look and see what you end up with when you compare your two answers. Look at that. I gave you the answer. A tough one with a double square root. Just remember, the same principle holds. The first little square root, x plus 2, has got to be positive. And the big square root, 10 minus the square root of x plus 2, has to be positive. So you work both of those out. And then you compare the two answers, and you see where they overlap. One of them has to be greater than 2. The other one has to be greater than or equal to 98. So if you look at it on a number line, they both overlap once they're past 98. So you can see what I did there on the number line. And you've got your answers. Now, I know this video went very fast. My point was that you could look at it, pause it when you needed to. Hopefully, you thought they were helpful hints. Good luck. See you soon.